Welcome to our fourth and final uh, roundtable at ASM. Um, this, this final discussion is on uh, a topic that we've seen a lot, a lot written about. Um, industry 4.0 or 4.0 is a term that we're hearing a lot in Europe. We're using a term here in the US and perhaps more globally of internet of manufacturing to try and bring together some of these, some of these trends, the, the connectivity trends that are, are resulting in some of these opportunities. I'd like to invite a couple of guests up here to um, talk to me about this topic. First of all, Francois Monet from Cogiscan. Francois, come and join me. Just here. And also uh, our very own Gunter Schindler from ASM Assembly Systems. Thank you, Gunter. So I'd like to start exploring a little bit what we mean by IOM, and it's a it's a it's a term that, that we've we've started to use and we've seen in quite a lot of. Um, Articles and we're we're trying to define IOM as a way of connecting the whole of the the whole of the smart production line together and looking at what that means in terms of equipment and software that would be IOM ready that would be able to connect to the market and connect up and down the up and down the line up and down the supply chain record everything that goes into it record all the processes and the process data of what is happening on it and then communicate that data in an open protocol. And then we also have this, this kind of utopian idea of industry 4.0 where every, every single piece of the puzzle has a connectivity and has some intelligence. If we can just start by exploring what we think those terms mean and what they mean to us. Perhaps if I can start with you, Francois, on that and what it means from your point of view. Sure, of course. Maybe I can give a bit of background about, uh, you know, Kajiscan and, uh, you know, we're founded 15 years ago on that uh, vision of the factory of the future, essentially. Uh, at the time, we were starting to work with RFID, and we thought, you know, this is actually was our, our, our vision. You know, one day, every object in the factory would have an RFID tag mm -hmm. on it, would be antennas embedded everywhere, and essentially, all the data would be collected automatically without any intervention. That was our idea of the factory of the future, and we thought Kajiscan was going to actually accomplish that course. But uh, 15 years later, we can see that uh, there are some areas where RFID d does make <coughs> financial sense. In other places, we're still using barcode, and it's working fairly well. Mm. In other cases, we're actually interfacing with intelligent machines. So, you know, there's uh, actually a, a mix of technologies. And the fact is that uh, you have to, to, this has to be driven by real business requirements. So it's nice to have a vision of the future, but th it's just that. It's a vision of the future. It's a journey, right? Mm. So Practically, you know, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to do? And uh, what is the best way to accomplish that? And in this case, different technologies come into play. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. has, that, has that evolution been slower than you expected over that 15 years? Did you think you would change the world? Uh, it, it has been slower than we expected, definitely, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it takes a lot more time for people to oh. adopt new technologies, for things to fall into place, for, for standards to be established, for interfaces to be created. But it is moving forward. It's just a question that I don't know if in my lifetime I will see that factory of the future. But uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, at least as we see progress, that's, uh, that's a very good thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And from your point of view, Gunter, if you look at IOM as kind of this platform that allows us to connect everything, where do you see the gap between that and the, and the, and the vision of Industry 4.0? I guess it's a, a main step in direction of Industry 4.0. Uh, the big difference is every process has to be capable, so that means uh, our customers want to r maximize their output, they want to maximize our best quality, and they also want to be more flexible. So we always had these kind of challenges also in the past, so even for 15 years ago we were tackling these kind of things. What helps us to actually uh, help our customers would be transparency. That means data management. So we need data and the data has to be right. It's not necessarily just collecting data. A lot of times we monitor and do a lot of data but nobody can use it. So we need a certain kind of capability of the machinery and also of the lines uh, to actually communicate to the outside world data which is real data and which is correct. And this is mostly the most tricky part. Yeah. yeah, that whole big data thing is is certainly a topic relevant to Internet of Manufacturing, but also to Internet of Things. We're in this position now where we're talking about having, what is it, something like um, 35 billion devices connected to the to the Internet at some point. Huge amounts of data. It's, it's figuring out what, what we're going to do with that. If we look at the manufacturing process, when we do collect all this data, when we do mine it well, what are the benefits? And Gunter, from your point of view, how how substantial are those benefits? How much difference in terms of competitive 
competitive advantage do you think Industry 4.0 can make? Uh, it's hard to calculate. I just can give you an example in regards of uh, when you just start to reduce first pass yield so that you say, okay, I can I can help the customer to improve the quality level by 0.5%. We did a calculation on a regular mobile line. It saves the customer roughly 1 million US dollar a year right, material value. Line. So it's just one line. So yeah. we just have to you know, think about what kind of savings you can look into. But at first, you have to basically have systems who can help you to increase this quality level. So <clears throat> the communication between the systems and having certain kind of closed loop functions, and this is just the beginning, are very necessary. That's, uh, that's the benefit. If you say, what is the benefit of Industry 4.0? Per I personally think that there are a couple of examples which we have already Industry 3.0 or 3.2, but never uh, 4.0. And they're already saving a lot of money because they are talking already by one-digit, one-digit TPM levels, right. which is saving a significant amount of money. Yeah. And I'm not talking about per line. I'm talking about for the facility. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the savings are huge. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's more important, particularly in high-cost environments, for example, to maintain that competi competitiveness? It's not necessarily a high-cost uh, environment because the labor costs are not the problem. The material costs are the problem yeah. because 85 to 90 percent of the cost of the products are related to the material. Yeah. And when you have to scrap material or do some curtain re repair work, which at the final end is not uh, having the same quality level, it costs you a lot more as the couple of minutes which uh, another operator spends. Yeah. Yeah. One, of the, one of the byproducts from IOM or Industry 4.0 seems to be traceability one of the attractions seems to be able to be able to get traceability without actually having to put systems in place it should be a given is that something you see as a key benefit of this whole process uh, definitely traceability is one of them I, I don't know if it's the biggest one it's probably the most uh, widely uh, talked about though and and, and, and and for several reasons you know but it, it, it at the end of the day it's all driven by cost you know and business uh, business needs so why people uh, require traceability is because of the cost of recall the impact of that and trying to reduce the cost of warranty that's really what's driving it and sometimes let's say in the contract manufacturing world it could be even a, a competitive edge you know that if you want to get bigger contract higher margin type of business you need this traceability kind of capability so that's why we're seeing that as, a, as more, uh, a more much more widely spread requirement today but as you mentioned the traceability you know and at least in my opinion it's a it should be a byproduct of a good tracking and control system that essentially you know is a making sure that everything gets done uh, as efficiently as possible, get done right the first time. As Gunther mentioned, you know, trying to avoid the cost of non-quality. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a real, uh, ultimately, the, what you're yeah. trying to do is produce the best possible product at the lowest possible cost. Yeah. And traceability would be a, a byproduct of all this data collection. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, look at, if we look at IOM and we talk about IOM ready, about machines and systems being IOM ready, Gunther, how close do you think we are to that? Um, within ASM, within the industry, are we achieving that? And how far away are we from, from that kind of industry 4.0 imperative? As I said before, the, this is a basic requirement that you are able to communicate with the machines. So IOM, <laughs> capable machines, we have definitely. There is no problem in that regard. We have an OIB which you can connect to and then and then. But the big difference between Industry 4.0 and, out of my perspective, uh, Internet of uh, Manufacturing is that you start in getting into certain kind of control loops. You know, just collecting data and monitoring it and might get certain kind of information to an operator who can derive something or an engineer can derive something out of it is one part. This is doable today. We have that. It's not a big deal. All, 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 there are a lot of suppliers in the market who can provide that. The most important part is how do you get an intelli intelligent loop? because we are talking about smart, we're talking about smart products, we're talking about smart factory, we are talking about smart people. So we have to give our, our customer a possibility to actually use this data to make the right decisions out of it and give him the transparency that he can derive certain kind of control loops out of it. And the next step would be having intelligent expert systems who actually collect this data, doing certain kind of data mining, and then derive these kind of ideas or these kind of conclusions out of this. Now you see the evolutionary process to getting Industry 4.0. Yeah. And to a certain extent, Industry 4.0, I totally agree, is a philosophy, it's a philosophy, <laughs> it's a vision, or whatever. <coughs> but part what I was talking about right now, these kind of controlled loops, they're not so far away. Yeah. So how close are we to those expert systems in terms of, in terms of timing? Are, are they coming to the market? They are coming to the market. We also develop on one part. 
but we are concentrating right now, at the, as you can imagine, on the first three areas, like the printer, SPI, and the, print, uh, the placement machine. What we see is that they are, they are basically related to roughly 70% of, of the failures, what you see in a line. That's our estimate. Yeah. And here we can talk. We can work a lot. You know, we can do a lot already. And this is one part with our with our acquisition with DEC, which helps us a lot now to help us closing the loop here yeah. between the printing and the placement side. Yeah. And also the SPI is going to play an important role in this part. Yeah. So, quite honestly, your question: How far are we off? I say a couple of years okay. to certain okay. areas. So not too far. Francois, from your point of view, you're, you're seeing a lot of different customers trying to apply, trying to get as close to this as possible. Uh, Gunter talks about Industry 3.2 and, and sometimes boldly goes to 3.3 or 3.4. How close do you, think, do you see customers getting and is there a perception difference between where they think they are and they actually are? Uh, I think we're getting closer, definitely. Uh, we see a real signs of progress. I mean, you know, th this vision needs to be executed by collaboration between different players in the industry. It's not just one company, even if, as big as ASM, they don't cover everything, you know, on the floor. So there needs to be collaboration, interfaces, standardization, and uh, ASM is a good example with OIB as an example. This is the most advanced interface available today in the industry to connect to these machines to third-party software. And that, that's a key as well because uh, eventually you need uh, all kinds of different machines, different software, different systems talking to each other and sharing data and, and good data, of course. So uh, that, that's a key part and we're seeing real progress on that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we get that connection. We get the connection through all the different machines. We get some expert technology on top. Um, we get some intelligence and we get an open system, an open communication that everybody can use and everybody can get involved in. The open thing will make some people nervous. Um, the Internet of Things discussion has been dogged by the, the hacking concerns. Is that something we should be worried about on a, on a factory floor? Is, is security a real challenge, Gunter? I definitely say yes, yeah, because uh, <coughs> besides the situation that uh, our, our customers uh, certainly want to differentiate from their competition in a, in a way that they, that they want to be number one in delivering certain things, we cannot ignore that uh, spionage in industry is a really big issue in this world. And you know, having these kind of capabilities to hack in certain kind of systems is not making it better. So we really need to concentrate also in that area about how can we how can we really come up with safe systems because currently a lot of customers like just a remote access, they don't want to have that from us. Mm. Even if we can do it easily, they just don't want it because they are so scared that we basically use it somewhere else or in different ways. So or concerned, not scared, maybe concerned. Yeah. But it's a big issue. So yeah. we need to come up with uh, rules. And for me the most tricky part is that I personally thought, you know, in the last five years, ten years, I felt like we have enough rules and it should be safe because uh, I use a mobile phone, which I now found out since two days that it's also hacked, you know, but it's not hacked by an industry spionage, it's in hacked by, by other uh, organizations. Yeah. And I have no clue how people use this kind of data for making a big advantage for themselves. So. It's hard to say how you can save that because yeah. it's uh, obviously not so easy just to do a crypt and whatever and then uh, crypt it and that's it done. Yeah. Obviously, it's a lot uh, more to do. Yeah, yeah, because the bad guys are as smart as or working just as hard as as, as hard as the good guys. That's something that that your customers are concerned about as well, Francois. Yeah, I would say everybody's concerned, but it's not just a manufacturing issue, obviously, you know. Uh, everybody's connected to the internet nowadays. I mean, your banking, you know, your bank account is connected to the internet. So these issues are real and uh, they're, they're, they go uh, much wider than just our manufacturing industry. So I think uh, everybody will be concerned trying to find the right solutions and trying to avoid some of the, you know, some of the, the issues we hear about, uh, yeah. uh, about uh, security over the internet. So yeah. definitely that, that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we shouldn't let it stop us. We should continue to push forward. Gunter, I'm going to hold you to your two years prediction. So two years from now, I'm going to invite you back here and see how close we are to that expert system, that expert software. Uh, and we'll talk about that some more. I'm sure it's a debate that's going to continue for some time. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for taking part. Thank you, everybody, You're for welcome. listening. Thank you.